Guys, our friends at Magic Spoon have done it again. They've transformed their delicious, healthy cereal into a crunchy, on-the-go snack with similar nutritional value to a protein bar. Just way more fun and enjoyable. There's cookies and cream and cocoa plus peanut butter. Each bar has 10 grams of protein, 1 gram of sugar, and only 4 grams of net carbs. Magic Spoon cereal bars are available now at magicspoon.com slash chale. But supply is limited. There's a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you're not happy for any reason, Magic Spoon will refund your money, no questions asked. Just click on the link below and use code CHALE for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash chale to try out their delicious new cereal bars while supplies last. Don't forget to stock up on their cereal boxes while you're there. For my Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon is now shipping to Canada and the UK. Usman just laid out his game plan when he takes on Leon Edwards, and Usman said it, I quote, I'm going to take him down and beat his face. <laughs> okay. Could you be any more honest than that? Could you be any more direct than that? And I will tell you, and this is the fan in me, I have been studying this sport since 1993. The very first one ever, when I cut class, the only one time in my life I cut class, went with my buddy Jeff Williams down to a rental store and got a VHS tub of something called the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And from that day on, I've never missed an event. I study them all, and I will tell you, the quest and the goal of this sport has changed many, many times. Like, by example, in 1993... The quest and the goal was not to go make a bunch of money and to be in a bunch of living rooms on television. It was to find out which martial art was the most effective. So then by 1996, you had guys, Marco Huaz, Don Fry come to mind, who had two arts. They had a black belt in grappling, Marco Huaz, but he was also a professional Muay Thai fighter. Or Don Fry, who'd done some boxing but was a Division I wrestler. It's one of these things. You come into the early 2000s, and all of a sudden there's gyms popping up that are called MMA gyms. There's trainers, not that do boxing, not that do kickboxing, that do MMA. And the whole sport began to change. We all understand that. But what are the constants that were once true in 1993 and are still true today in 2022? Because there's only one. If you throw a guy down against his will and keep him there while bludgeoning him, you win the fight. It is the only thing. There was a day if you knew a knee bar, you were way ahead of the curve. And then a guy named Oleg Tektarov comes along, and he's showing us below-the-waist tactics, knee bar uh, into heel hook, by example, to go with the arm bar, what I meant to say a moment ago. These were revolutionary techniques. If you were one of the three or four or five people walking the planet that knew what a knee bar was, or an ankle lock, or a heel hook, or the really advanced guy that knew what an inverted heel hook was, I mean, you were going to be champion. These were secret techniques. I grew up on that. I grew up where me and my buddy Justin would go to 7-Eleven every single Friday, and every fourth Friday they would have a copy of Black Belt Magazine. Within Black Belt Magazine, there was a technique session, and I would study that. I didn't have the money to buy the magazine, so we'd stand right there in the store till we got it down, and then we'd leave and we'd discuss the technique. But these guys that were offering these, that were getting featured in the Black Belt Magazines, they were making all sorts of money selling instructionals and DVDs because they had secret techniques. Now, if you say you have a secret technique today, you're a fool. You're a snake oil salesman, no different than those guys were. It was just closer to reality back then because the internet didn't exist. Information sharing wasn't a thing. So what the boys in Brazil were doing and learning and coming over to the US and beating everybody with is very different because we hadn't seen it yet. Now I bring that to you because the only thing that you're gonna find that could date itself back to Hoist Gracie's inception in 1993 to today is taking a guy down and beating him up. That will never go out of style. And Kamara Usman's got to be in Leon's head at this point. I mean, that, he's got to be. Leon is a British guy. Leon's a stud, by the way. Complete stud. Five years, never lost. Eight or nine times up. I think he had a, I think he had a no contest in there with Blahal Mohammed, but he, he hadn't been beaten in eight or nine or ten times to bat over five years. Total stud. He's still a British fighter who still fought Kamara Usman before, who was taken down against his will and pounded on. Now you have this new Kamara Usman. Now you have Kamara 2.0. 
who's not just one of the guys, who's not just an up-and-comer with potential. He's the number one ranked pound-for-pound -pound fighter on earth. But he does two different things. Go ask George Masvidal if Kamar Usman can box. Go ask Gilbert Burns if Kamar Usman is dangerous with his hands and his kicks. So now Leon's got to be going, which guy am I going to deal with? Which one do I have? The new one that can punch and kick or the, or the old one likes to take you down and beat you up because the old one just stepped forward, so I'm going to take you down and beat you up. That is a mind game. That is a mind game to the highest of levels, guys. It's the truth that will set you free. It is the truth that hurts. It is the truth that works. And so many guys don't ever want to tell the truth. They want to get away from it. I know guys that when the UFC comes in with cameras or Bellator shows up with camera crews, no sparring footage. Do not show this. We will not work out in front of the cameras. I want to see this, the edited version, before it goes out. If any of my secrets are going with, people really believe that. I don't begrudge them. That's the, that's the majority. I sit in the small minority that saw the effectiveness of Babe Ruth walking to the mound and telling everybody where he would put the ball. I saw the effectiveness of Mike Tyson in every highlight reel he did, throwing an uppercut followed by a hook that was devastating and powerful and intimidating, let the opponent know it's coming, warn him ahead of time, and then make good on his promise. I saw the effectiveness of that. I love to tell a guy what the game plan is. I love what the strategy is. I love telling him the truth about what a game plan and a strategy is and having him think, that must not be the game plan and that must not be the strategy or he would not have told me. It's a simple game. It's just really fun for me. Now, I'm attempting to guess what this does to Leon and Leon's trainers. You have to take a guy at his word. It's all you have. Even if you know it's a hustler, you still only have what he said. So that's now going to be in your head. Forget the punches, forget the kicks. Be worried about getting it close. Don't overextend on anything because Kamara's timing that. He's going to come underneath, drag me to the canvas. He's got a national championship in wrestling. I come from a country that doesn't do wrestling. This is the mind trick of the year by Kamar Usman. Now, of course, we have the question, is Kamar telling the truth or is he gaming the system? I think he's telling the truth. But even if he's not, he has now planted a seed. A striker cannot strike effectively until he can be comfortable with the fact that he can stop a takedown. It's what makes Israel Adesanya so devastating. It's what made Anderson Silva so effective. They were very hard to take down, so they would let it go very loose on their feet, and they had great skills. All the other guys that had great skills on their feet were so worried that they weren't going to stay there that it, it, it paralyzed them. It's very different. Kamar Usman's now in Leon's head. Kamar Usman is now in my head, but I want to ask you guys, are telling the truth. Is that what he plans to do? Does he plan to take Leon down for the better part of 25 minutes and beat him up? Or is he playing with us?